Welcome to the talk show of the International Light Association. We meet twice a month live on alternate Wednesdays. And if you miss a live event, you can see the recordings of the shows on the ELA YouTube channel. We are excited to present to you experts in the field of light, color and sound and how these energies or frequencies can be applied to advance health and well-being. In this talk show you learn interesting facts from experts around the world and you will not only be able to listen to the presentations and debates but you will also be able to ask these experts your questions. The ELA invites you to join us on this journey of learning and exploring the vast possibilities to use light, color and sound for your well-being. Good afternoon from New York City. Uh, we are delighted to have all of you here joining us for the new episode of the ILA talk show. It's a fourth episode today um, of our first season. And um, we are delighted to host two stalwarts in their field. Uh, one is Dr. Jerry Wintrobe from the hallowed land of Park Slope in Brooklyn, New York. And uh, the other is another famous doctor uh, from uh, originally a native of Holland, uh, Dr. Jacob Bransma. But I believe um, he has uh, traveled all over the world um, working uh, with um, patients with dental pain. So. Today, we are trying a different format, you know, within the ILA talk show. What we're doing is we are working uh, on one side with uh, uh, hosting Dr. Jerry Ventrobe, who is going to speak about uh, tuning folks, color, syntonics, and your vision. How do you tune in your vision? And then about 45 minutes later, we will start with Dr. Jacob Bransma, who will discuss with you how you can tune out your dental pain using ozone treatments, which as many of you know, is a gas, is a light. And we are uh, today foraying into the ILA talking about general topics of health and wellness, as well as the diverse range of speakers that we attract for our talks. So uh, with that introduction, I'd like to um, welcome Jerry. Um, Jerry, welcome. Thank you for taking the time to join us. Thanks very much for having me. Sure. And um, we're really looking forward to, um, you know, what you what you will be sharing with us today. And uh, uh, I would love for you to uh, share with the audience um, a little bit about your journey. I mean, you are I mean, in the conversations I've had with you, which I've thoroughly enjoyed, you have a diverse background that has now kind of pivoted or has pivoted for many decades uh, towards helping people to hear more from you on how your journey has been and then we can start with uh, your demonstration today okay so uh well, welcome everyone very happy to see to see you even virtually um so uh i've been in practice for 35 years and uh I, um, in, in Park Slope in Brooklyn, I actually, my practice, my physical practice actually closed uh, from COVID and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm now working virtually. But um, I'm a former, before that I was a New York City school teacher and I had, a, I had a, a, a lifetime of vision problems. So the main thing that I do is I do something called vision therapy, which is exercises for different types of vision problems. It's really designed to make vision more of an effortless process than it is. We treat a whole host of uh, visual issues, whether it be turned eyes or lazy eyes or um, problems using the eyes together. And, um, but anyway, in those 35 years, or at least in the beginning, um, basically what I did was as I followed, um, I, I followed what I was taught. I went to, I had teachers and they, told me what to do. And I, you know, read some studies and it seemed to make sense. And then I just sort of did it. But <laughs> what happened is that I got very interested in alternative medicine for myself. I had no real, I never had thought that I was going to actually integrate alternative medicine into my practice. So I got interested in it. So I started uh, studying nutrition. I went on some, some wild diets. I became a vegetarian, uh, 
Uh, I studied herbology. I, I studied uh, meditation. I developed a yoga practice. I started reading Eastern philosophy. And you know, I kind of did it, just kind of dabbling into all these areas. And then I discovered syntonics. Mm. You know, I didn't really know what it was. I knew it was a, a colored light therapy. That's really all I knew. And I went to a conference. And so Larry Wallace, who happens to be on this call, mm -hmm. was one of my teachers. Um, of course, I say that because then I can say that Larry's older than me, which is you know, probably the key to the whole story. But anyway, <laughs> um, so, uh, but you know, Larry Wallace and Jacob Lieberman and all these guys are at these conferences and, and I'm really like learning from them. them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm learning from them. And yeah. so, uh, and, and so just I'll give you a little background. So what syntonics is, just in case mm -hmm. you don't know, syntonics is using colored light to balance the autonomic nervous system. And vis some of the visual problems and, and other problems have, show an imbalance in that system. So there's the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. And mm -hmm. if, you, if you take, I'll just give you a quickie. So if you just take the, the colors of the, of the spectrum, Roy Jabiv, you know that one? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. So red, orange, yellow treats the sympathetic, blue, indigo, violet treats the parasympathetic, and, and uh, green is, on, is in the fulcrum in between. Mm. And anyway, so I'm studying this and, and, uh, and using it in the practice and it's very effective and I'm very, very excited about it. And it was, you know, it was kind of a bit esoteric for me. And then what happens is that I, so here's where I might divert a little is that I then get really involved in bhakti yoga. Oh, and bhakti you. yoga, bhakti yoga, for those of you who don't know, is devotional chanting. Mm -hmm. And I, I start going to, uh, to chantings and, 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 and to uh, sessions and to ashrams. And here I am uh, um, chanting. And I don't think much about it other than the fact that it's, it's having this tremendous impact on me. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then what happens, and this is where the sound piece comes in, is mm -hmm. that they're, they're giving a course in Manhattan in mm. sound, a, a, a year long course in, in studying sound. So I figured, well, why don't I take it? I have no interest whatsoever. I don't, I don't even, I, I never even really knew much about sound healing and I never connected the bhakti yoga to it at all. Okay. Mm. So I go and I start studying it. And this one particular weekend, uh, a fellow shows his name is Dr. John Bellew. And mm. John Bellew is a, a PhD psychologist, a naturopath. He's a polarity therapist, he's vast. Mm. And, and he's also created tuning forks. And what he does is he tells us that there are these two tuning forks, C and G, mm -hmm. which are right here. Okay. And what you do is that when you tone them, they create this perfect, what's called the fifth. Now I'm not a, a musician, but a fifth is, one is C, D, E, F, G. So they're five notes apart. Mm -hmm. But this particular uh, balance of the two, what it does is it creates, um, it creates a, uh, a coherence, a neural coherence in the body hmm. and can actually cause many other things to, to improve. And, uh, and, and I'm gonna get into it in a, in a little while. There's actually a, a, a correlation in syntonics to this. Um, but in any event, the, this, this interval, uh, the, the note C is, um, vibrates at 256 cycles per second. Mm -hmm. The note G, if this particular note G, remember there are many octaves of the same note, this right. particular note G is 384 cycles per second. And if you break that down, or if you reduce that all the way down, it, it rate becomes two to three ratio. And that two to three ratio is a very profound ratio. It's, it's called the divine interval. And it's been, it's loud, as a matter of fact, you know, Pythagoras wrote about it. 
Lao Tzu, who is an ancient Chinese philosopher, sure. wrote about it. And he, he said that it was the connection between yin and yang. Is that, okay. is that also similar to the Fibonacci? And the Fibonacci series is, it is sort of, but not exactly. Uh, I don't want to go off into that if, if that's okay. But we, we did a lot of study in the, in, about the Fibonacci series. Um, mm -hmm. But it's the same idea, sort of. Mm -hmm. um, but these two times create this perfect balance. And you can use it if you want to take it back to the autonomic nervous system. It's the still point where the sympathetic and parasympathetic balance. It's the, the spot in between that creates that balance. And uh, so John, and, and, and what it does is it stimulates the, whoops, stimulates the vagus nerve, uh -huh. which is the master nerve of the body. And it also causes the release of nitrous oxide uh, which affects the relaxation response. And I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug my buddy Larry Wallace here because I read a paper that he wrote recently in 2009 where he said that syntonics also causes the release of nitrous oxide. So it, again, it's another correlation between the two. And um, in any event, uh, I started using it in the practice. So so I'm going to, is this a good time? I'd like to share a case study where oh, I used. Fantastic. That'd be fantastic. And just for the audience, uh, please mm -hmm. uh, feel free to send in your questions. Um, we would try to address uh, clarif questions, seeking clarifications as we go. And big picture questions, we'd like to keep it towards the end of this talk. And uh, just to acknowledge um, what you said about Larry, I think anybody who's learned anything on syntonics, at least in this group, has been through Larry or Ray or, you know, Jacob. So right. It's, Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I just want to say about those early syntonics conferences, those those early syntonics conferences, it was before the Internet. Mm. So the only way you were going to really learn was by going to those conferences and talking to people and people would get up. You know, uh, there was a guy, his name was Charlie Butts. He gets up, he's he, he guy practiced in the middle of the Midwest and like, you know, who knew who he was? And he just said, this is what I do. And, you know, you, and that's how you learned. You know, there was no, you know, I mean, other than getting a journal and reading a, a study, that was the only way you learned. So anyway, let me tell you about this stud, case study. So I take these, so I don't know what, you know, I mean, I listen to John and I'm, I'm in the course, but I don't really know that this is going to work. You know, I, but I figure I'll give it a try. So I have a patient and the patient has something called anisometropic amblyopia. And what that is, is that it, it's a condition where one eye has a very, very, very high prescription and sees very poorly. And the other eye has a very low prescription has no, practically no prescription sees 20, 20. So the, the poor eye in this kid's, uh, the kid's six years old, in her case, sees about 20, 80, okay? Mm -hmm. And she, has, she, she can't relate to uh, uh, her friends. She has emotional issues. She's very clumsy. She bangs into things in the playground. It's a real mess, okay? So this is, I, I have to tell you, uh, the, the key to this story is, is that I'm from New York, okay? That, 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 that sort of prefaces the story. So the thing that you can do in New York is you that know, you say- If I saw you on the road, I wouldn't have been able to guess it. <laughs> no, you wouldn't figure it out, right? I'm sure, I'm sure. Anyway, so what happens, you know, you know the, the key to, by the way, the key to New York is, is that I don't actually have an accent. Everybody else has an accent. Sure. <laughs> just so, just exactly. so I remember that. I want to keep it straight here, right? So anyway, so in New York, what you can do is you can say to the patient, hey, I've got these tuning forks, use them. Yeah, that's it. You know, you don't explain it to them. You just say, use them. So, so the, what the patient, if, if this patient after a year's time, I got this patient based on her situation down to 2040, in other words, I'm trying to get her to see better. And what 2080 means, by the way, is it means that if I have perfect sight, I can stand at 80 feet to see something that this kid has to stand at 20 feet to see. So that you know, gives you an idea of how poor that vision is, right? Great. So anyway, I do vision therapy. Mm -hmm. Okay, I do vision therapy. I do syntonics. And just the point on syntonics, we say that that 
condition has too much parasympathetic. So we treat on the sympathetic end. So I gave her what's called alpha delta, which is a red orange. So red, orange, yellow, green. If you just think of it there, it's very, very strong sympathetic treatment. Okay. And I'm trying to turn the eye on. Okay. And then I say to her, I want you to use this C and G tuning fork twice a day. And, and, and I guess I should demonstrate it. Okay. For, for how long though? And there's a question from the audience, which is what you're answering, which is how did you do that? Okay. So, so here's what you do. You buy a hockey puck on Amazon. That's the key. Okay. And then what you do, cause you have to hit it against, against uh, a rubber kind of, you can hit it on your knees, but you can also hit it against a, uh, a rubber uh, thing. Sure. And so what you do is you, I, I can't really show it, uh, but you go, I don't know if you can hear it. Mm -hmm. And then, so what that, and then what you do is you listen to it. But if I sit here and listen to it, I'm going to completely zone out and that'll be the end of the lecture. But anyway, you listen to it. And then what you do is you allow it to dissipate. And then what you do is you switch hands, you hit it again, allow it to dissipate. That's the treatment. Okay. And, and I want to also say, you know, in, in light, we say that there's an after image that you get, you know, when you look into a light. So we say that there's an after sound. So mm. what you do is you listen to the end and then you actually listen a little past it. Yeah. And that's the after sound. And mm. what we do is, is that I actually, you actually give it to the children. I, most of my practice is children because basically I'm a kid. And so what you do is you have them use it every morning and every night, like on awakening and before bed. And you do it like that because that way it gets used twice. Yeah. But actually you could, you could use it all day if you wanted to. Okay. And, uh, so, a request from the audience again, can you do the folks again? And I want to talk to you a little bit about the whole concept of uh, using the kartals in uh, bhakti yoga, which is also the perfect fifth when you look at the different sizes of the kartals, but more on that later. So, uh, so well, I'm want sure I'm, an, I'm a bhakti yoga expert, as you could tell. Uh, if I knew what you were talking about, it would make it might make it easier. But in any event, but that's okay. That's okay. Anyway, so what you do is is that so you're asking me to do this again? Yes, there's a uh, okay. So, so here's my hockey puck, but it's a little low. And if I put it on my computer, it really would be bad. So I hit it once, mm -hmm. once, twice, and listen. Okay. But I gotta finish telling you about this case. Okay. Yes, so here's what happens. Okay. And so I listen till the sound dissipates, switch hands, hit again till the sound dissipates. And that's, that's the, um, mm. and that's the treatment. That's the whole treatment. And you know, a child, the six year old isn't going to listen to the end. I mean, if they listen like for, you know, half of it, you're like thrilled, but you know, the, the effect is profound. So my point being, is that when I saw this case, I had seen, you know, I don't know, a hundred, well over a hundred cases like that exact case in my practice. So I knew, and I did the same vision therapy that I always used, and I did the same syntonics. The only thing that was different was this. Mm. So the trick is, is that, is that seven months into the treatment, I do, I re-examine the kid and what happens is that she's 2020 in the 2080i, right? So you can tell by the way, by my calm demeanor that, you know, I reacted in this very, you know, kind of laid back way, which is of course is, oh, isn't it interesting that you're 2020? No, that's not what I do. I completely freak out. You know, I go, oh my God, you're 2020, this is the greatest thing in the world. And I, I, like, I imagine that I'm going to be standing before the Nobel Academy. Like, this is it, right? <laughs> you know, this is it. Oh, my God. My whole life's changed. And I turn to the father, and he gives, by the way, the classic New York City answer, which is, is that I say to him, like, wow, this is so great. She can see 2020. And by the way, her emotions change, and she's, you know, she's connecting to other kids. She's playing in the playground. You know, everything's, it's, it's utterly fantastic. The guy looks at me and says, well, does she still need glasses? And I go like, does she still need glasses? That's like the least important thing. You know, right. she was, couldn't see before, she can see now. 
And then he repeats it, right? <laughs> and I realize that he has no idea what I'm talking about, nor is he even listening. <clears throat> and he then walks out of the office pissed off because she still needs glasses and misses the whole point. So, um, what, so should I make my connection back to uh, syntonics? Because I do want to. Okay. Well, and a quick question. If, uh, okay. just, um, uh, do you not touch the body with the tuning forks? Okay. So, so I'm showing you the way that I've used it. Hmm. This isn't the only way to use it. And uh, by the way, I don't want to run out of time because I've got to talk to you about these tuning forks, which are mm -hmm. the ones that are related to the syntonics. Right? Okay, so then you load off on the questions till the end. Why don't you do okay, this? Okay, so let's just do this. So, so the answer is that you can, you can listen to it, but vibration is vibration. I mean, you could take, you could take uh, colored light and project it onto the body. And, and met there, I'm sure there are many people in the audience. I, I went to the last ELA conference in Croatia and I met tons of people who did stuff like that. So you can take it and there's another way to hit it, which is you can hit it together, but you have to be very careful when you do that because you can scratch them. They're made out of aluminum. And so what you can do is you can tap them and you can move them throughout the energy fields, the energy fields around the body. And I want to say a point on that. So John is a polarity therapist. So he, that's how he does it. So the patient is lying on a, on a uh, massage table and he takes the forks and he runs them around the body, not just necessarily listening from the ears. Okay, mm -hmm. if that answers it. So what I wanted to just comment on is nascentization. Excuse me. <clears throat> so nascentization is a term, a syntonic term. And it has to do with putting the body into balance so that the body more regularly responds hmm. to the treatment. And in nascentization is that it says that you can use green light, which is that still point and create this balance in the autonomic nervous system, which could put the system into balance. So I realize that this is the same thing, that this is nascentization, that you're actually, even though it's not related to syntonics, it's doing the same thing. It's creating that still point. And that when you create that, everything else, for you acupuncturists in the audience, when you create that, chi is going to move more freely. When you create that, everything removes, moves more freely. And so that's why it's so critically important. So then the next piece is that now I say to John, just out of nowhere, I say to him, hey, John, wouldn't it be cool if we could take these syntonic colors and convert it to tuning forks? I mean, where do I get that idea from? I have no idea. I just had pull it out of my hat. And John, being John, being brilliant, and being uh, you know, a real scientist, much more of a scientist than I am, says that he thinks we can. Mm -hmm. So we go on this kind of search to figure out what the actual uh, wavelengths are of the tuning fork, uh, excuse me, of the syntonic colors, because mm -hmm. it seems that the, it, it was not the easiest thing to figure out or to find, but we find them. And, and, and they're actually a range. And we picked, the, we, what we did is we picked the center of the range. And then what we did is we took the syntonic colors and we converted them all to tuning forks. So now for you ELA folks, you mm -hmm. could take, so, so what we used um, is that we, we put one large one into the set and that we feel that is, is the green that will create that balance. The, the mu mm -hmm. that we use in syntonics, we we're not really sure that that creates the balance, but it basically does. So we have alpha, which is red, mm -hmm. delta, which is orange, theta, which is yellow, mu, which is green, uh, pi, which is light blue, epsilon, and then omega. Okay, and that's, that was the range that we did. 
why did we, there were actually some other colors in syntonics mm. that are not in that range. Why did we use that range? Honestly, because those are the colors I use in the practice. So we did it based on that, you know, um, there, the thing is there were so many other combinations. And also these was pretty much in my practice, these were the main colors that I use. Some of the others you might use, but they're not, you know, as critical. So um, at least for me. So that's, that's, we sort of created it for me. And, um, and, it, and I guess the, the next part of this, if you want me to, is that I can, I can tell you how I use it in the practice. We would love to hear more. Okay, uh, so, okay so how we use it. So here's, mm -hmm. here's the trick. So what did I say in the beginning? I'm a, I'm a clinician. I'm mm -hmm. not a researcher. Mm -hmm. I'm not a, uh, 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 you know, I, I mean, I guess I'm a scientist on some level, but I kind of stay away from it, right? Mm -hmm. And so anyway, uh, John hands me the, pro the forks and he says to me, create the protocols. And I'm like, what? You know, I just, I just follow the rules. I mean, I use my intuition, I use other things, but right. I do basically what, you know, what I've learned. Mm. And so here's what I found. So the first thing which was obvious is, is that in, so in syntonics, where is it uh, here on my desk? Um, okay, so in syntonics at home, patients used syntonic glasses that we get from a specific company. And these are syntonic glasses that we use. Okay, and mm -hmm. these are all for different, uh, uh, different color combinations. And the patients use these for 20 minutes a day. And then what you see what I did, because I'm so creative, uh, is that right behind me is my syntonizer, uh, which I rolled in just for you. And so that's it, called a college machine. I have two of them. And what happens is the patient looks into it. And so and, and there are lights and then there's a, a collimating, I think it's called a collimating uh, lens. And then there's a light that comes from behind it. And that I would use on every patient in every session and 20 minutes a day, they would do this at home. So what we did is we took the syntonic tuning forks and what we did is we struck them and we put them on the patients while they were looking at the syntonic colors. Cause we figured that was a good, a good way to start. Well, what happened is that the children, you know, didn't say much of anything because they're kids. The adults said that they found the effect of the color to be enhanced, that there was almost a synergistic, uh, where, they, where it was almost, not that the color needed enhancement, but that's what they experienced, okay? But then we had this really interesting thing. So one of the things that happens in these days in optometry is that we start seeing people who have traumatic brain injuries. And so they have uh, concussions and stuff. So I don't see, I never really saw too many people like that mm -hmm. um, just by the nature of my practice. But I did have one and she, her experience was that it was too strong. Oh, okay. That it actually made the color too strong and it made her, it was actually disorienting for her. But then what we were able to do is, is that, remember, we're doing ex eye exercises. We're doing vision therapy. So what uh -huh. we did was we would strike the tuning forks. We would strike the tuning forks while they were doing the vision exercises. It's fantastic. It was absolutely fantastic. So they're actually getting syntonics while they're doing the vision exercises because the only other way to do it is to wear a blue pair of glasses which can, which could, can, you know, in other words, you could actually wear the syntonic colors and do the exercise. But the problem is, is that some of the colors are dark and, yeah. and, you know, it's a New York city office. There's not a lot of light in a New York city office. So, you know, it's not like we're out in the field. And so, you know, you can, it doesn't, it doesn't illuminate enough and the patients can't, they couldn't see it. So yeah. it was a way to make it portable and we used it that way. The problem with it, is the advantage to C and G is that it's cheap. C and G is cheap. I, I mean, they, I, I forget what they cost, but they cost like, like sixty, seventy dollars. Mm. This, this is like three hundred dollars. So the problem is, is that you're not going to sell that to a patient. 
And right. all they need is two of the forks out of the entire set. So we only used it in office. You know, we, th that's how we used it. And um, uh, I do have another fork that I want to, maybe during the question part, because sure. I do want to show this to you guys. That, uh, Jerry, I need to pose. So what you're saying is that if I am being exposed to the alpha lens, right? Uh, for whatever the Correct. treatment is in right. tonic, that you're gonna then strike a C? No, 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 I'm, no, 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 no. Huh, that's what I'm if, asking. If you're looking at the, the alpha- uh, The tonics is the C- The CG, the CG is separate. Separate. So separate the alpha for, and tonics is uh, its own tuning fork in the set. That's the what alpha is the, is, is the color red tuning right, right. fork in the set. Yes. And, yes. and it's, so it's, a, it, it's separate. Don't, don't mix the two up. I, but I, I had to make the point on CNG because in reality, I have more experience with CNG than the, than the syntonic forks. Understood. But I, mm -hmm. so, but I, but, but I see that syntonic forks as being like, like really a, 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 a way for there to be a marriage of color right. and sound. And the that, marriage that's what you're I suggesting as a hypothesis or as, as something that you've proven is that you will use alpha is equal to red. So the red tuning fork with the red glasses. That's correct. Okay. Correct. Correct. In other words, whatever combination of syntonic colors that I'm using, mm. I'm gonna, I was striking the same color for the tuning forks. Okay. But the point, and then the other point being is that I could also use the same colors of, I could use the same tuning forks and not use the syntonic lenses at all in the session. Mm. I would still never, I would never have them, even if they owned the syntonic tuning forks, I would always have them use this at home. Mm. I have that set too, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, that's, that's what I would do. Fantastic, okay. And, okay. Um, the one of the audience members has requested. Can you repeat sure. the color of the forks one more, uh, once more? The I'm sorry, say it again. Repeat the colors of the forks. Yes. So, so the, the colors of these forks are alpha, which is red, delta, which is orange, yellow, uh, theta, which is yellow, mm -hmm. mu, mm -hmm. green, pi, light blue, uh, upsilon was more like an indigo, and uh, uh, omega, which is, which is kind of like a violet. Uh, omega is, is not exactly a violet. I actually contacted Jacob Lieberman the other day and he, he gave me the breakdown of all the different <laughs> layers of, of, of what uh, omega was. I, 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 you know, it actually has a little red in it and stuff. Uh, it's very interesting. So- And those of you who are taking notes, uh, uh, please remind yourself that within seven days, this video will be, this recording will be available on YouTube. So you can watch it there and get this information again. Oh my God, I could watch it, I could watch myself twice. That'd be fantastic. <laughs> I could show it at, you know, Thanksgiving. It'd be great. <laughs> right. Just lay it on your, yeah. yeah. Thanksgiving dinner table. Okay. But, but you wanted to show us. Uh, I want to show you just one thing. Yeah. And I want to show this to you because I'm assuming that there are, ac I mean, are there acupuncturists in the audience and, and body, I'm assuming there are body workers in the audience. And, and also I watched Larry's uh, lecture of a few weeks ago and he talked about putting the color on different, uh, on the, uh, the extraocular muscles, which I thought was incredible. I had never heard that. Um, but so what this is, is this is a compilation of C and G. Hmm. So what it is, is that, and it has actually a crystal on the bottom. And so what you do is that you, you strike it, it, you, this, you're not gonna be able to hear this, I don't think. Hmm. Nah, you're not gonna be able to hear this. But what it is, it's, it's, it's actually, it's called a 128. Why is that? Because 384 cycles per second minus 256 equals 128. Yeah. And so this is called an auto 128. And what you can do if you're a body worker is you can hit that and then put it on points on the body. And then the vibration will work its way into the, uh, into the being into, you know, you put it on meridians and stuff like that. Beautiful. 
and the dantians etc where can we purchase this so and you guys so what you can do is is that i so rather than get into all that and use up questions you uh, they're going to post my email send yeah. me an email and i'll give you all the information fantastic okay that would be the easiest way that's a great idea so um, about this um, device that is strategically placed behind you, um, could you tell us a little bit more about how that works and how long you uh, use that light on, a, on, on one of your patients? Sure. So the syntonics, so, so that's called the syntonizer. Yes. And, uh, and I do want to say that although I like these, and I, I you know, because they're so handy, and we used to make one, I brought one that, I, that we, we had these homemade ones for years that we used. Um, but a glass lens is better than a, an acetate lens. Sure. Okay. And so the lenses that are in this are glass. Mm. And um, as a matter of fact, I even have a, this was created years ago and these have glass lenses in them. Uh, can you imagine somebody walking through Central Park wearing one of these? Okay, in New York, you know, you get away, you could easily get away with that. But in, in any event, so it's glass, right? Yeah. And um, so the way a treatment is done is that it's is that what I did in the in the beginning of my practice, strictly because I had less patients, is that I'd bring patients in only for syntonics, and the way it was done was twenty minutes a day, four or five days a week for 20 sessions. So you did it for either five weeks or four weeks, 20 minutes a day, you didn't do anything else. And, and because we're gonna run out of time, I don't wanna talk about the testing because you'd use visual fields and so on, but I'm gonna leave that out. But anyway, you do this for 20 minutes a day. But when I discovered that I really wanted them to do this stuff at home and not you know, do it before, because it wasn't practical. I had too many patients and I didn't have enough of these. So mm. like in the beginning of my practice, I had three of them. And what I did was I used to lease them out to patients so they could just use it at home because these home ones didn't exist. Mm. But in the practicality of my office, I was doing vision therapy for 45 minutes, a 45 minute session. So what I did was that I had my patients, every patient who did vision therapy had a syntonic session for 10 minutes during within the 45 minute session. If I yeah. did it for 20 minutes, it was too long. And, and, it, and it took, but, so I picked 10 minutes and I, and I got some nice effects. I mean, you know, in New York, I, I would see, you know, I didn't just see kids. I saw, I saw like, you know, Wall Street guys who were working their brains out. And when they would get into my office, they were so exhausted yeah. that I couldn't even treat them. You know, you'd spend like half the session trying to get them better. So what I did was, I used to give them syntonics right off the bat, brought them right down, and then it was able to, to, to work, to get in, to be mm. able to do the work that I needed to do. It's the best thing to say. Very interesting. Um, thank you, Jerry. I'm just gonna remind the audience that we have another um, few minutes um, uh, where we can ask Jerry questions, but in case uh, you have follow-up questions. Just email me. Yeah, his website and his email um, have been put on the chat. So um, you can take note of that and be in touch with him. He's super responsive. Um, so any, uh, we'll just wait for uh, other questions to come in. Um, so tell me um, what in your, in your journey as a, as a healer mm -hmm. and as a, as a person who's helping people uh, as a professional, what is your next big project? What is it that you're aspiring to do? You know, I, I, I you know, we, we talked about this the other day and I, I was thinking, you know, my, the, the, the most important thing to me at this juncture of my career, you know, I've done this a long, long time and right. I'm really, I'm actually surprised that at this point in my career, I was hoping when I started this journey that at this point, my work would be more accepted and it's not, you know, I mean, I'm not saying that syntonics and light isn't accepted. It is, it's much more accepted, but you know, holistic medicine still, it's still a, a small group. So I, my goal is to get this information out to as many people as I possibly can. And I don't care how I get it. And, and, and because I, you know, one of the things that I don't want is I don't want to retire 
and take this with me. You know, right. I just want as many people, and that's one of the reasons that I wanted to do this, because I just as many people as possible to know about color and know about sound and know about the, the, the integration of the two. And so I was actually gonna throw in this quote by Einstein. So the quote is, everything in life is vibration. Mm -hmm. Everything in life is vibration. And that's what we're doing. It's, vi it's energy medicine. And that, that really is what I want. That's really what I want. Well, that's fantastic. And we hope to have you here um, uh, again so that we can keep talking about it. We, we, I posed a similar question to Larry when he spoke on January 27th. Uh, the how do we get this information and syntonics and the amazing work that all of you rock stars do uh, out to the people? And uh, his response was uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, very, very uh, uplifting in that we have to focus on doing more statistical studies to showcase that this happened. So whatever the ILA can do to uh, generate that kind of, um, uh, you know, information, um, that would, is, is something that we would all be looking forward to doing. You know, you want mm -hmm. to, as a group, as the International Light Association, create a forum where um, uh, people like you can talk and demonstrate and then have 10,000 or 100,000 people see it. And then the word goes out, you know. And, and you know, and, and, and let's, and, you know, when this, uh, as, as, as we say in uh, New York City, this for Schlugan of virus is over, you know, <laughs> that, and then we can actually be standing next to each other. And then we can, uh, uh, you know, by the way, uh, the next time, if, for those of you, for those of you who are not in ELA, the next time they have a conference, go. Okay. I'm going to just tell you, I, I just want to say this will be my parting shot. So <laughs> here's the difference between the European conference and the American conference, okay? At the American conference, when there's a break, they give you a cheese Danish and, and, and coffee in a styrofoam cup. Right. And when you go, when you go to, the, uh, to the European conference, they give you biscotti and, and espresso. And a, full so I'm, and a full spread. I mean, it's like, it's like, forget it. It's like, I'll never go to an American conference ever again. That's all I can say. <laughs> yeah, we've been anyway. we've been discussing where we will host the next one when this Mishugna Mishugna first look at first look at Yeah, I have to work on that. You're gonna work on that. You know? I, I'm working on my Yiddish. Yes, <laughs> yeah. um, exactly. you know, and we, uh, we we don't know yet where we're gonna do the next conference, but uh, there is talk about doing an online conference um, uh, shortly. Um, so love it, love uh, love to see you again. I mean, that's you know that's the best we can do this year. We don't know, of course. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and um, maybe it'll be uh, not Europe or America. We'll see. Well, I don't know. After Europe and America, well, you know. Just... What's left? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't know. Well, we could do it on the moon. You know, that'd be good. Just, right. just five sixth of the population of the world. Yes. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, you bring them in. You know, exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. All right. You're, you're a hoot. Um, okay. And uh, thank you so much for. Thank uh, you. My being pleasure. here and sharing My your pleasure. information My and pleasure. we will talk about bhakti yoga offline um, oh. and uh, and I there are many of your friends here from the Pula conference uh, who are sending in their uh, notes fantastic and, fantastic yeah, well we move to the next speaker if you want to go through the comments uh, and respond uh, absolutely please. I will all right, so staying on schedule after this wonderful first session, uh, we are on to um, welcoming our next guest, another stalwart, uh, Dr. Jacob Bransma uh, from Holland. He is, um, he's an amazing guy. I've, I've met him a few times now in terms of having conversations and I love his journey. I mean, his story is uh, phenomenal and we are so happy to host him because it's this kind of information that uh, we wish to share with the audiences at large at the ILA. So, Jacob, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for sharing your time. I know you're really busy and uh, we are very glad to have you here. Thank you very much. Good to be with you Fantastic. and your audience. <laughs> Yes, and what a fantastic audience. And I'm sure they'll have a lot of questions for you as well. Um, now, 
when we spoke the first time, uh, you had this, uh, you had shared this amazing story about how your journey in this holistic dentistry unfolded, you know? So tell us a little bit about how you got to where you are at and what you do so that the audience can kind of catch up on, uh, uh, you know, uh, your, uh, your uh, focus, your specialization. Mm -hmm. Sure. In my teens, I was already uh, very interested in uh, dentistry. I got uh, two uh, teeth uh, pulled when I was uh, 15. So that kind of stimulated uh, me. But uh, regular dentistry, I did not uh, believe in. I did not want to do drilling and extraction and uh, things like that. Mm -hmm. So I uh, came across uh, chiropractic. And so I went to uh, the United States in uh, California in uh, 1980. Eventually, uh, did a study in uh, the UK and started uh, practicing in uh, 1984. I always kept my mind on uh, dentistry. And in the year 2003, these uh, instruments of a uh, healer zone uh, came into the market. So uh, mm. it immediately piqued my interest. Mm. And I kind of studied it for, you know, a couple of three months or so and saw how the dentist uh, reacted to it. Mm. Uh, and I saw a big polarized uh, discussion, you know, mm. uh, some very strong opponents like uh, Julian Holmes and uh, Edward Lynch, uh, professor, but mm. also very uh, much uh, antagonistic. Oh, no so uh, it, that even interested me even more. And after <laughs> six months, nobody wanted to start in this country. And I had some uh, bad uh, tooth, you know, so I wanted to get the treatment myself. Uh -huh. So eventually I started, uh, decided to set up uh, the business myself with a, a dental hygienist. So uh, the idea was uh, him doing the work and I was taking care of the business. Uh, uh, so we started in uh, May 2004, but after two months, you know, uh, it was uh, unsuccessful. The pressure was uh, too much, you know, from the authorities and the regular dentists. So he kind of uh, gave up. So I had to do the... Sorry, Jacob, what kind of pressure there? If you don't mind clarifying. You said sure. a lot of pressure. What kind of pressure though? Uh, well, uh, the uh, I was renting a space in Amsterdam. So uh -huh. my landlord, he was uh, getting very nervous. So uh -huh. he eventually, he uh, threw me out on the street. Uh, the inspector general of the health uh, authorities, uh, they wanted to... Uh, start a process, you know, against me, a legalization. We, they didn't believe it was uh, legally in order, huh. uh, which it was, because I figured it out, uh, of course. Mm. Sure. But, uh, eventually, the tempers went so hot, they threw me out on the street. So I had to retreat from Amsterdam and then uh, set up in the city of Snake, in the building which I already uh, owned. Uh -huh. And then uh, uh, continue it on a bit uh, smaller uh, scale. So they physically made it uh, impossible. You know, they wanted to close me down. My God. My God. So that was 2004 when uh, they threw you out on the street. So they were going to, they were threatening legal action. Then you moved to another city where you had the physical space and then you could do your practice. And what has been your um, experience in the last 16, 17 years in that how, uh, because you remember when we met the first time, um, I had asked the question um, uh, on ozone uh, therapy here, ozone uh, treatment here in the United States, and it is very much under wraps. You know, people don't want to talk about it. They, when I called a, a dentist, a holistic dentist, and said, hey, I, I want to use ozone um, uh, for treatment. They wanted to know, they asked me 20 questions before they said, yes, they did it. Like, where did you get this information? Who gave you this number? How did you, la, 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 la. And it was, it was uh, quite amazing because at about the same time, I just met you. So uh, I would love to hear a little more, I'm sure the audience also, uh, about the kind of treatment that you're doing and what your journey has been in the last 16, 17 years. I also read your blog. It's fantastic, fantastic. I, I, I couldn't put it down, you know, because there are so many beautiful stories um, that that have been part of your experiences. So, so uh, love to hear more about this journey over the 16, 17 years before we get into the technical aspects of it. Yeah. 
Thank you. Uh, it was a very uh, challenging uh, journey with a uh, very steep learning curve. Mm. But uh, from the beginning, I wanted to make it straight to uh, the public and everybody that this uh, was going to be a practice based on uh, ozone. Mm. So uh, we don't uh, we don't do any drilling at all, except the drilling and the filling, you know, to remove them out. But uh, drilling and the uh, uh, bodily tissue we don't do, so we let uh, the people inside. So and mm. in the beginning it was uh, quite challenging. With some reports were uh, very favorable, and mm. then other patients, uh, you know, didn't they improve uh, too much? So I had to go strongly into nutrition uh, as well, mm. uh, like uh, minerals, uh, uh, iodine uh, minerals, uh, proteins, uh, enzymes, hormones. And the mm -hmm. whole whole thing, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so I went into a Western Price, Anthony William, uh, mm -hmm. Otto Warburg, and all these uh, concepts. And mm -hmm. eventually, I kind of figured out a good, reliable system uh, to uh, to relieve a tooth ache and also mm -hmm. to do uh, repairs, cure the teeth, and the whole lot. You know, after 16 years, I'm quite uh, confident to. Uh, take care of most of the uh, common dental uh, and parodontial uh, disorders. Uh, okay? So once again, uh, it was uh, very challenging. Hmm. And uh, the big uh, problems was always a learning experience. You know, I, had, I really had to delve deep into it and uh, going into all kinds of uh, uh, nutritional aspects, uh, getting into harmony, even spiritual aspects, even breathing, uh, like Vedic, uh, Ayurvedic uh, breathing and things like that. Yeah. So uh, now, you know, I have to say I'm uh, quite uh, confident to take on most of the common uh, disorders. That's fantastic. And um, is there any ailment um, uh, or any dental issue which we can't solve with Oza? Or are you saying that pretty much anything will work? Well, like uh, Lyme uh, disease, uh, spirochetes, uh, these are still the uh, most uh, challenging. You know, these are the spore formant uh, microbes. Mm. Uh, they tend to uh, withdraw and then uh, come back. So it's that it's an ongoing battle, you know, uh, with uh, quite a uh, severe uh, Borrelia and uh, uh, like Lyme uh, cases. So mm. you have to work on uh, different aspects, including uh, thyroid and uh, adrenal uh, issues like adrenal fatigue and uh, all kind of that. Well, I see what you're saying. Okay. Um, so would you uh, like to show us uh, or tell us more about the technology, how the machines work, how a, how a treatment could work? Say if I came to you and I said, listen, my regular dentist is telling me that I need a root canal. What would, what would the steps be with, with you? Okay, I'll, uh, I'll take a good uh, anamnesis, of course, then uh, check out how everything is, uh, looks. If there are x-rays, I'll have a look at the x-rays. Mm -hmm. uh, then I'll set up a uh, prognosis and uh, tell them if the prognosis uh, is good, bad, or, you know, doubtful. Mm -hmm. And then I'll make them a proposal. So a typical proposal could be like, uh, you need to have a, a two treatments for these uh, three teeth. You know, we have different options like A, B, or C. You know, you can go in different uh, option uh, packets. So the technology is based on a, on a high voltage uh, discharge, oh. uh, which is a Nikola Tesla invention. You know, he, he's more or less accredited there with it. Uh -huh. uh, so uh, the ozone is applies under a vacuum uh, cap. You have uh, some models here. These oh, wow. are uh, like round eight uh, caps, uh -huh. which are placed on the on the tooth, and then an an um, vacuum is applied of a forty millibar, so uh -huh. relative uh, vacuum, and then within the vacuum, uh, the ozonized air is being introduced and uh, applied straight into the tooth, so that the ozone will flow through the uh, tubules. Oh. You know, the dentition is consisting of uh, animal and dentin, right. and the ozone goes, flows right through the dental uh, tubules. Because a lot of the problems are uh, caused by the tubules in the, in the root. That's really where the cause of the uh, problems lie. 
So say, for instance, you have a tooth, and the, the, the dentist says you need to have the uh, uh, the nerve uh, removed. Uh -huh. uh, we say no, leave the leave the uh, uh, nerve alone, and then apply to the to the root uh, the the ozone. So it's uh -huh. applied to the uh, root cervix to the side. So that's a kind of impregnated in, into the root at all, uh -huh. and the relief is usually instantaneous or it can last like uh, two or uh, two or uh, five days uh, the improvement is usually between 40 to 70 percent so they uh, usually have to come back in two three or four weeks oh. and then for a second time uh, it's a very usually very successful except on cases with old root canal treatments crowns you know or too deep uh, fillings you know, basically, when a regular dentist has uh, ruined uh, the teeth uh, too much. Mm. Fascinating, fascinating. So you're saying that two to two to four sittings of using this ozone gas through a vacuumized uh, tube over your tooth, and you instantaneously feel better. That's... Oh yeah, lots of lots of people already feel better uh, going home. Okay. But on some cases, you know, it may take up to two or five days. Okay. So what's the, um, what's the toughest, what are a few of the toughest cases that you've had um, that you were able to um, uh, treat with ozone uh, treatment? Well, the tough cases are uh, old uh, root canal uh, treatments, uh -huh. but also uh, cases like uh, adrenal uh, fatigue, you know, uh -huh. when they have very low resistance and, the, uh, and also thyroid issues when they're licking uh, iodine, for example, or uh, vegetarians uh, which don't do, uh, which are, who are lacking in uh, proteins and they're not doing the uh, breathing exercises. You know, I, I'm getting a lot of people who are into uh, Hinduism and all kinds of things, mm -hmm. but I, I tend to warn them, uh, you have to do the breathing. If you don't do that, you know, you're not char charging up your uh, uh, cells. You yes. really have to build up your magnetism into your cells through lots of oxygenation and uh, concentration. So that your immune system is stronger and therefore you can, that you can use the, the ozone gases then works better, is it? The ozone treatment works better if you're holistically uh, looking at it. That is, do your pranayam, and get your right kind of uh, nutrition. Uh, is, that, is that what you're saying? Yeah, the uh, ozone is basically a strong electron acceptor. Right. So they tend to uh, withdraw the negative charge from uh -huh. uh, the molecules and uh, from the cells. Right. So it's basically restoring uh, the positive magnetism of, uh, of the matter and also of the living cells. So the positive magnetism needs to become more dominant. So this is a, a matter of drawing out uh, the negative, negative charge. So it's basically molecularly higher oxygenation uh -huh. and a higher uh, positive charge uh, relatively. Fantastic, fantastic. So if you follow the same logic, right? Is it conceivable that the a similar treatment can be infused directly into your blood for general health? Sure, they already doing that. You know, they have they these uh, blood uh, transformations where they tap out the blood and enrich it with uh, ozone and recharge it. You also have like uh, rectal insufflation and uh, back limbing and things like that, like they do in uh, Cuba, you know, that you have this institute. Uh, but there's the other... Uh, Ozone practices, they seem to come and go, you know, there seems to be a challenging uh, economical basis because they tend to come and then disappear again. Uh, but you can do uh, ozone and all kinds of, uh, also for uh, skin remedies, uh, psoriasis and things uh, like that. Even oh, cancer they use it for. Oh, no kidding. What You were saying something in Cuba. So they're doing, uh, there's an institute in Cuba that does ozone treatments, yeah? Oh yeah, all kinds of treatments, even veter uh, veterinary treatments. What, also sorry. joint uh, treatments. Joint treatments. Ozone okay. injections, you know, like in shoulders, knees, hips, and they're getting excellent uh, results uh, with that. 
Uh-huh. Okay, there's a question from the audience. Um, uh, for many patients, they have the jawbone too inflamed um, or damaged. Does your system help to repair the jaw? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You've got a lot of jaw infections, uh, which is usually originated in the root. So through the root apex, uh, the jaw is infected, you know. So you get these huge uh, jaw infections. So the way they treat this uh, is uh, uh, just the same. Mm -hmm. Uh, We uh, treat uh, the roots, you know, from all angles. And Mm -hmm. then we uh, uh, make sure the uh, the cause of the jaw infection is stopped. So it's being dried up from the the root. And then uh, it will uh, generate from the circulation by uh, stopping the cause from the root. Because the root is usually uh, the cause of the uh, of the jaw problems. So with ozone, you don't need apex resections and uh, jaw uh, operations uh, anymore. I see. I see. So, so how long does the process last? Uh, if somebody came to you, would they be there for a couple of hours, or is it just in and out? How, how long is uh, the first setting of putting the gas? How long do you expose them? Uh, the exposure of the gas is uh, typically uh, 20 seconds per, that's it, that's uh, per side. So if you have the molar like a uh, 3.6, uh-huh. you apply them 20 seconds uh, lingual and 20 seconds buccal. And that's more than enough. You know, sometimes with high sensitive people, uh, they can only handle uh, 15. Even with uh, 20 seconds, you get sometimes a bit of reactions like uh, like uh, uh, some uh, fatigue or uh, bowel problems or uh, like some influenza kind of uh, reactions because because the bacteria are being oxidized, but mm-hmm. you get release of endotoxins which go into the bloodstream. So mm-hmm. it uh, may get some uh, malaise uh, temporarily. I see, I see, I see. Um, so the connected question uh, to the jaw question is that do you still need to give anesthesia? No. No. No, wow. I never give anesthesia. No, because the, the treatment is usually uh, painless. Normally everything is painless, hmm. but there are some cases uh, with high sensitives, you know, when you have uh, acute root infections, uh, the ozone is sometimes uh, painful. But they, these are very rare instances. Okay. And then I tell them, you know, let's do like uh, 10 seconds. And mm. then I see you next week. I do part two and do your uh, homework. You know, you, mm. they get uh, get homework uh, done. You know, minerals, proteins, uh, 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 maybe iodine, uh, things like that. Or maybe a uh, vitamin B here drops. Uh, uh, you know, you can put it right into the tooth. The vitamin K uh, also uh, is quite effective. Vitamin K? Oh, yeah. Or- K and K, yeah. So um, another question from the audience is, um, um, which I think you uh, partially answered, but uh, maybe you can elaborate on that. Does this ozone stimulate cell mechanisms by making it more positive and thus inflammation is reduced? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so basically the... Uh, the ozone exists of uh, oxygen radicals, which is a regular oxygen, except uh, two electrons. They are being uh, pushed out of the orbit through a high voltage uh, discharge hmm. in a cylinder uh, in the machine. Hmm. So it'll attract excess negative charge. You know, it'll attract the excessive uh, electrons. Hmm. So the, uh, the charge is uh, molecularly uh, balanced. And then it becomes the the appetite crystal, you know, the sodium, uh, uh, the uh, calcium phosphate will attract more phosphate, more minerals. It will uh, harden, it will cure. So you'll see the teeth uh, growing more uh, dense with a more regular uh, shine. So these brittle teeth, which you see through, you know, Mm. they tend to fill up, you know, in a couple of months uh, time. So you see them becoming more uh, dense. So it's not only making them uh, building up immunity, but building up uh, a stronger teeth uh, as well. 
That's fantastic. That's fantastic. So there's a comment from an audience member here who is sharing that uh, uh, the name of a doctor here in New York City who uses ozone therapy to treat a whole host of issues, including cancer, and used it successfully on his mother for a chronic nine-month cough. So this is connected to what you were saying earlier also, that there is uh, many other forms of uh, ozone treatment. That's fantastic. Um, the one other question that has come in is how does ozone, like getting to the brass stacks, how does ozone, a gas or a light, treat a cavity and stop the disease process? Right, the uh, ozone is being treated just like anything else. Uh -huh. You know, uh, the, the cavity is uh, applied onto the, onto the tooth with, uh, and uh, a, a vacuum is uh, created, 40 millibar. Hmm. And then the ozone is circulated in through the uh, cavity, right into the tubules. Like for example, uh, uh, you have this uh, cavity here and this uh, tooth. Mm -hmm. So the cap is applied uh, right onto the top and then it's being circulated. So the whole cavity is uh, cleaned out. And the, uh, the, the decaying tissue will harden out. So we're not uh, removing anything. We're not drilling anything out. We're not scraping anything. We mm -hmm. just leave it alone. Uh, do some, let, uh, let uh, three to six weeks uh, self-cure with uh, minerals, enzymes, and all the all the the whole uh, the whole nine yards. And when it's all cured and properly stable, then we can do a bulk fillings with sp special glass ionomers without uh, drilling. So uh, and that makes it a lot easier and no, uh, no pain mm. and very lasting uh, feelings. So it's much better, you know, it's, uh, it's a world of difference with uh, regular dentist, uh, dentistry where they still have to do all the drilling, I think. So you're saying no drilling, no the, drilling. the capsule 40 millibars, it uh, hardens and then later on you come in with a, and you were saying that do um, what you call it, the vitamins and the minerals, the vitamin K, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then you come back and you put this glass filling, but no drilling. That's, That's right, absolutely. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Typically after uh, three sessions, uh, the repair uh, can be done. Uh, sometimes when the tooth is uh, quite good, you know, in a good condition, I mm -hmm. can sometimes apply the... Uh, the filling at once, but it's sometimes a bit of a gamble. Typically, uh, once again, I like to uh, get them cured for about uh, three to six weeks. And oh, then a uh, third session, I'm quite happy to apply it. Because if you apply it too much, oh. you, you, get a, you get a reaction, you know, you get a pain. And particularly when the cavity is too close to the, to the root, you get a root reactions. So you need to have to wait for some secondary dental to uh, to form for uh, a safe filling with not uh, too much of a risk of a reaction. Huh. And what kind of reaction would you would you be worried about, like as a side effect? You, well, you... if you have like a pulpitis, you know, you have your acute uh, root condition huh. and you would apply the filling too much, uh, you would get a uh, pain. Huh. Uh, so, I mean, uh, Anything can happen, you know. So when these kinds of, when I'm too much in a hurry, when I apply the uh, filling too fast, in the, in the, uh, of course, in the beginning, you have the different experiences. Mm. I let them come uh, come back. And then usually with another uh, ozone treatment, uh, you can balance them out. Mm. Uh, so uh, with some good aftercare, you can, you can still remedy the uh, situation with ozone. But Jacob, so you were saying 20 seconds, sometimes 10 seconds, but what if I, like, say if I was, I came to Holland, but then I had to come back to New York, I couldn't I just take 40 seconds and then fly back? Well, if you come from New York, it's uh, probably a better proposal uh, to do your whole admission. Yes, uh, because of the journey, you know. I mm. get uh, people from uh, Italy, you know. Mm. And... Uh, uh, his doctor wanted to do a root canal, so uh, so I did uh, three teeth, and in two days I uh, did another time, and he was uh, absolutely fine. 
But uh, if you make such a long journey, it's probably more economical to do your whole uh, dentition, about an hour of work. Mm. And we have a special uh, three-year program I developed uh, for that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, I'm definitely going to write to you, not just for myself, but for, I, I know, at least another five people who could gain from that. Maybe we could all come in a, uh, in, in a plane together. Mm. And, you know, <laughs> you yeah, the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's like a magic bus, magic bus coming for ozone, you know. Um, so uh, many more questions are coming in. So let's keep flying through them. Is there, uh, is there a list of physicians in the U.S. who practice this that you would be, that, that you know of? Well, the problem is that there's a heal ozone uh, machine, which you see in the back. Yeah. It's not uh, FDA approved. So it's uh, very difficult for uh, United States dentists. Although it's not uh, forbidden, really, you know. So you could order them in Canada and drive them in your car boot into the U.S. And then yeah. any dentist, I believe, could uh, be practicing here uh, in your uh, country. But uh, once again, uh, they have some other types of ozone uh, machines where they, they use the ozone uh, in an open air space, you know, which I'm not uh -huh. in favor of. So it's uh, difficult, you know, for uh, an American dentist to practice this uh, openly. They would probably uh, risk into getting uh, in trouble with the authorities. Yeah, and the, the, just to add to that, uh, to the question that's been asked about a uh, list of physicians in the U.S., uh, in my research, as I was saying at the beginning uh, when I was introducing Jacob, that uh, the only places where you can see some listing are in some natural uh, you know, magazines, you know, called like awakenings. And there are a few here in New York where you can see who practices it. But then when you call them, uh, it's very difficult because uh, yes, there is a, uh, uh, though it's not illegal, there is the pressures that Jacob referred to being thrown out on the street, being asked all these questions. That's part of, you know, when, when you're challenging the status quo, then, then that's bound to happen. So, um, we're very fortunate that we have Jacob here sharing all this information because so many of us and people that we know need that because, you know, the constant thing that I hear from my friends is, well, I went to the dentist and they said, just pull it out. You know, <laughs> you know, that's the answer to everything. Just pull it out, you know, or root canal. So RC or pull out, you know, and um, anyways, so moving on, there's so many questions that are coming in now, Jacob, people with heart illness, can they, oh wait, there was a question before that. Do you think this can exist in France? Uh, yes, I would think so. But uh, France is, has a culture of being very uh, authoritative, you know, from the government. So it's more likely to uh, find it in countries like uh, Germany and Switzerland and uh, Italy. Uh, France is quite challenging. I see. So okay. I'm not aware of, I would have to look it up, you know, Yeah. but uh, any yeah. dentist in Europe can, can do it, but they usually use, uh, use it as a sideline a business. Yeah, not as a main business. Yeah, not yeah. as a main business. And then you run into the technical difficulties mm. uh, because these uh, method is uh, very challenging, uh, to mm. be honest, you know, it's sure. not easy. Yeah. And the I have not been able to delegate uh, this problem. Mm. Uh, mm. You know, it, it sounds very easy, you know, 20 seconds uh, left and right, you know, you're done. Well, once you know the, the craft, it's uh, simple. But yeah. uh, honestly, I have not been able to delegate it, which was my uh, uh, intention, really, you know, mm. set up uh, like uh, five treatment rooms, have five people do the, do the business, mm. do the treatment, I do the business, and then everybody is happy. No, it doesn't work like that. Mm. I'm still uh, working on it alone. <laughs> fantastic well All i'm right. getting paid for it so i'm not complaining that's right that's right yeah and you're clearly doing i mean this is a big picture question that i'll keep for the end because um the purpose the mission of the ila is to have professionals like you that help health and wellness well-being around the world and are not doing the regular line right they are they're asking the question challenging uh the paradigm or that that we have been handed. And we'll talk about that a little bit uh, because I'm sure it's a lonely journey because there are not too many people like you who are doing this. 
So, but we'll come to that in a minute because let me just go through these fabulous questions that are coming in. People with heart illness, can they have it? Sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, although heart illness is not really an indication to do this kind of work. But as a secondary infection, uh, I could, you could uh, benefit uh, greatly, you know. Uh, people tend to come from really the dentition, but the whole general health uh, often creates a breakthrough, even spiritually. It's uh, mm -hmm. quite amazing, you know. Uh, and I wonder uh, the people, you know, if you start this whole thing, you know, you are likely getting a breakthrough uh, in okay. your life. So I had some some uh, some years ago a professor, you know, from the university. So I huh. told her you might get a breakthrough, some kind of thing. Huh. And she later told me, oh yeah, oh yeah. I went to uh, she went to a trip to Peru, and she had a huge uh, spiritual awakening. Uh, she told me. So uh, it's quite amazing. Uh, but uh, you get such a big load of your whole system. Mm -hmm. So many of the other systems also uh, generally improve, uh, all together with, of course, the uh, nutritional advice, yeah. which uh, go together. For sure. Yeah. So it's a, yeah, I think, I think uh, what I've read in your blog and after I met you, uh, the research that I looked at it, I mean, this ozone treatment is often, uh, you know, it's called the God particle or it's connected to like this thing that kind of, gives you a greater awakening because it's kind of taking away the negative forces and reinforcing the positive forces. So it's a beautiful, beautiful technology, which you're right that while you're treating your teeth, turns out that uh, you could be the next uh, evangelical, evangelical preacher on the American TV here because you have this big awakening because of yeah. your anything is possible. I mean, this is my point because it's not only treating you for what's the problem, uh, but it's also cleansing the rest of you as uh, you go at it. So, uh, and I, I really would love to hear more on that story with the professor. Uh, but uh, the next question, if I can just keep plowing through, can you share the page or blog with the articles that you've written? We certainly can. Please send us an email. Uh, we have uh, his blog uh, here uh, and uh, we'll get you an answer. Um, uh, the, what kind of filling material is used when there is a cavity? And you said something about a glass something. Could you repeat that, please? Yes, I uh, like to, uh, my preference is a glass ionomer, uh, which are uh, uh, different brands. You know, you used to have this uh, glass carbamer uh, product, which oh. is called artificial uh, shark teeth uh, filling. Uh, but uh, this development has uh, continued. So now I'm using a DC. It's a Japanese uh, product. It's a tiny uh, glass particles. It's like glass particle dust, mm -hmm. which are uh, mixed with uh, monomers. And it has also some uh, minerals. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of getting a semi-fiscous uh, substance in a capsule, uh, which is mixed for uh, eight seconds. And then you place it uh, right into the tooth. And it's uh, a watery uh, hydrophile, you know, it's a, uh, it likes a watery uh, substance. Mm -hmm. So it's much better than the uh, composite materials for the posteriors, you know, for the molars and everything. That's fantastic. And so then literally... you apply some finish, you know, and it's a very tough, very good material. Mm -hmm. And it will all also help uh, strengthen and cure the, the, the root. It's actually beneficial uh, for the root, even though you can get some, a bit of a reaction, you know, because it's a chemical uh, response. Mm. Eventually it will uh, support healing uh, the root. So you get a biofusion. Mm. It really grows into the tooth, so it becomes uh, one. And mm. these fillings don't need to be changed, you know. They mm. can uh, sit for another uh, for, uh, 40 years. Wow. No problem. These fillings don't need to be uh, redone after like uh, eight or 12 years, which is uh, typical. That's amazing. But uh, so uh, moving on to the next question, because uh, uh, we have uh, many more questions that have come in, but this one is similar to what I asked, which is uh, uh, could one have more treatments in, let's say in one week, you know, 
And uh, the question is, uh, to travel so far, can we have more treatments in one week than just two? Well, generally, it's most economical to wait for like uh, two weeks uh, because I like to let it uh, stable, uh, let it stabilize. Yeah. Sometimes I get uh, people from Australia, for example. Right. And then in exceptional cases, I repeat it in uh, two days, uh, 48 hours okay. for a second uh, session. Session. But these are the exceptions, you know. Uh, so I like to, I like yeah. to kind of 10 or 20 days, yeah. settle down. But for exceptional cases, it could be like 48 hours for another uh, complete session. And what's the, what's the nearest airport to where you are? Uh, Amsterdam. Skip Amsterdam. Well, yeah, the, one, the, one, one and a half hours drive. Two and a half, you said? One and a half. One and a half. Oh, that's pretty close then. Yeah, and uh, on the chat, uh, one of the attendees has uh, offered for you, anyone coming there to stay with her. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, all right, so next question. What about if you had a root canal and still had the pain? Can these patients have the same treatment? Excellent question, and we have a great uh, success with that. In fact, I get a lot of people with uh, bad root uh, treatments. Uh -huh. And where, where they still uh, complain, you know, of the, of the pain and troubles and the uh, dentist can't find anything. And the dentist says, you, you can't have any pain, you know. Uh, usually I'm uh, very, uh, very successful. They, they tend to respond excellent to this, you know, worrisome regular uh, root canal. So even if you had uh, two or three uh, root canal treatments on the same tooth, we can still remedy them most of the cases. Fantastic, fantastic. That's really good to know. And incidentally, for all the members who wanted uh, Jacob's uh, information, uh, we have put uh, the blog and his website in the chat. So please uh, feel free to take note of that. And you would really enjoy reading his blog. It's both in Dutch and in English. And, um, you know, the way he writes is uh, quite uplifting to see how he's uh, helping all these people, right? Uh, then there's a question that uh, probably the last question for uh, today would be that uh, from the audience, uh, heart problems are related to the wisdom teeth. Maybe it would be great to help. Uh, does that... Uh, you, does that, is that question make sense or not really? Well, yeah, basically uh, wisdom teeth, uh, I'm not in favor of extracting. Uh, so, I, you know, with uh, cases of heart conditions, I would think uh, of treating the whole dentition, you know, mm. do the whole dentition like uh, two times. I mean, you could do all the uh, wisdom teeth, you know, four if you have all, the, all of them. Mm. But uh, generally looking at the whole situation, uh, making a good assessment, it's probably better to uh, have the whole dentition done for uh, two times to clean up the whole system. Great, fantastic. Okay, so um, one last question from my end. You know, given the fact that you are at the forefront of uh, utilizing this technology to help people, do you have a community of uh, uh, holistic healers, holistic dentists uh, that you uh, have as people that you bounce ideas off? Is it an organization that focuses only on what you do or it's just few and far in between and uh, uh, not too many people doing this? Well, I'd like to start with uh, Professor Edward Lynch, you know, which I met uh, in California a couple of years ago. Oh. So uh, we do uh, emails and, you know, if necessary, I can call them up. But uh, basically nobody is interested in this. In Germany, you have uh, like uh, Edward Hager, a uh, professor who's using uh, ozone. So he's an excellent uh, source of uh, reference. Oh. But uh, the problem is uh, this uh, practice is really unique because it's a, uh, solely based on helozone. I don't know of any other dentist uh, who, who works like this yeah, uh, yeah. for whatever reasons, you know. Mm. It could also be uh, technical uh, uh, challenges. Sure. You know, they may not have the capabilities 
And they may not have the uh, economical uh, resources to figure uh, this all out. Because uh, going into this, you know, you have to do a lot of research. Sure, yeah. Also uh, plenty of money to be able to do that, uh, particularly in, in the beginning years. Yeah. So for almost anybody, it's uh, really so challenging. You know, you have to be more or less inclined to uh, being a magician, you know, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to be honest. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, it's, it's been wonderful to have you here. I'm really, really glad that um, we met uh, through Thelma, our ILA president, um, and we were so happy to host you here. Uh, thank you for taking the time. And we look forward to uh, seeing you again as uh, you know, uh, your journey continues. And thank you for all the amazing work that you're doing for society at large. And uh, um, you know, I look forward to uh, hopefully seeing you soon after this COVID thing is done, you know, to come and visit you in Holland and uh, you know, uh, get to know more about what you do. So uh, on that note, uh, a big round of thanks to uh, both Jacob and Jerry. Um, what a fantastic, uplifting, amazing afternoon uh, that you both gave us. Uh, we would love to have both of you back um, in the ensuing seasons down the road for the ILA talk shows. And uh, to all of the wonderful audience members, uh, we'll be back in two weeks. Uh, you would have... Um, this episode posted by next Wednesday. It usually takes one week of post-production. And um, the announcement for the next show will go out with the light letter uh, that is sent to all the ILA members. So we would uh, strongly suggest, recommend uh, that you support us with uh, becoming a member of the ILA. So you are uh, in the loop on what we are trying to do. And uh, thank you all for your support, for showing up um, and for sending us uh, really encouraging messages, um, which mean a lot to us. So um, uh, the question is, um, uh, where is this posted? It's posted on the ILA website as also the ILA YouTube channel. Uh, again, uh, the previous shows have been done, uh, are already up there. This one will show up next week. So on that note, uh, thank you again, all of you for your support and we'll see you in two weeks. Bye for now. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Bye. Are you an expert in the field of light, color or sound and want to come on Eli's talk show? Contact us by email info at elacolor.org or for more information visit www.lightcolorsound.org and you will find information about the different ways to use light, color and sound to advance health and well-being. <music>